I repent, Lord God, for my attitude. Hallelujah. Because, Lord God, I want to come before you. Hallelujah. I want to come before you, Lord God, so that you can hear my prayer. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you, God, for these, your saints, that have gathered here today, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for this day. Hallelujah. This is a day, Lord God, that you had not promised to us. But I give you praise, God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in this day, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I ask that your will be done. Hallelujah. Your will, God. Hallelujah. For Lord God, these grounds that we are on, hallelujah, are holy grounds. Hallelujah. And I thank you, Father, that your ministering angels have been given charge, hallelujah, over each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we just thank you that you have your way. Hallelujah. Oh, we just give you praise, God. Because, Father, we know that we cannot do anything without you, God. Hallelujah. Oh, we just yield to you right now, Lord God. Because these are your sheep, your vessels. Hallelujah. That, Lord God, you work through. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, and we give you praise, hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord God, for waking us up this morning, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for watching over last night, hallelujah. Because, Lord God, if you had not, hallelujah, sent your angels, hallelujah, to watch over us and keep that death angel from stopping at our houses, Lord God. Hallelujah. We wouldn't be here today to just say thank you. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise, God. Lord, we ask that your will be done. Hallelujah. We ask, Lord God, that whatever we ask, we ask, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, if you believe, hallelujah, and what you pray for, hallelujah, if you believe it and you pray by faith, you can have it, hallelujah. It's already done, hallelujah. Glory, 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 Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you praise today, Lord God, that every word, Lord God, that will be spoken today, Lord God, Hallelujah. It's anointed and appointed, Lord God. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise, God. Father, we thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. We ask, Lord God, that your will, Lord God, your will, Lord God, your will, Lord God, will be done. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise, God. We thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Lord God, throughout our day today, Lord God, hallelujah. You watched over, you kept us safe, Lord God, hallelujah. Oh, we praise you for that, Father, hallelujah. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God, for the food, Lord God, that you blessed us with, hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you for your son, hallelujah. Your only begotten son, hallelujah. Your only begotten son, hallelujah. Oh, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, he died for each and every one of us, Lord God. Oh, I thank you, Father. I thank you when he was on that cross, Lord God. He had me on his mind, Lord God. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, 
we can say thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, that I have a hand in the world. I thank you, Father, that I have a hand in Hallelujah. Oh, we just give you praise, God. We 
a matter of fact, I believe if we just check our palm pilot, some of us that I live some of them folks who said what we wouldn't gonna be, what we should not be, what we could not be, but thanks be unto God who give us the victory. On one side of my hand, it showed me where I've been hit. But one on the other side of my hand, it showed me what I can get. Because if I can take a lick and God can keep on giving, y'all are going to talk to me up to here. Look at somebody real good and say, that didn't kill me. And look at somebody else and say, that didn't stop me either. That didn't stop me. I mean, that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Whatever your that is, whatever your that is, you know what that is. I ain't got the name what that is. Some of us got some that is right now. If it had not been for that, you wouldn't have this. If it wasn't for that, you wouldn't be where you are. If it had not been for that, you wouldn't be the person you are today. And some of y'all ought to be glad. That that tried to take your mind, but God said, peace be still. That tried to destroy you, but God said, don't move. You didn't even got to fight in this battle. Set yourself. Stand still. See the salvation of the Lord. Salvation means deliverance. See the delivering hand of God. See won't God bring you out. See won't God bring you through. See won't God shut the lion's mouth. See won't God shut your hater down. See won't God open up things that other folk try to deny. See won't God open up a double door and both close one door. See won't he do it. Is there anything too hard for God? That might be that, but this is what it is. Look at somebody and say it is what it is. Tell them and when it come down to God, it is what it is. Tell them I got some entitlements. I got some things I'm entitled to. And I need to get my stuff from God. Tell him I didn't come in here to look at you today. And worry about you today. Tell him say I didn't come to worry about you today. I came because I need a word from God. I want a word from Jesus' mouth. I need a word that's going to sustain me in this season and in this walk of life that I'm walking. Because sometimes I feel like a nut and then sometimes I don't. Sometimes I want to act a fool and sometimes I ain't talking to nobody up in here and sometimes I don't. Matter of fact, I'm going to be real. Sometimes I just want to push the time clock, quit my job, and just pack up and leave you, boy. And sometimes I don't. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus, Some of y'all got some people that are still from that. That person, that company, that clique, that man, that woman. Y'all know what that that is. Come on, don't make me talk, you bunnies. You know what that is. And some of y'all, that's are just that. They just T-H-A-T, they just that. They ain't doing nothing with nothing, they just that. Just lazy, they just that. Just sorry, they just that. Just complainers, they just that. No tired of haters around me, that's just that. I'm sick of that. But when I look back over my life, when you look over your life and see where God brought you from, you ain't got to worry about that anymore. You look into this now. Cause that is the past. This is the present. And now I'm looking to my future. But while I'm looking back, I'm telling that bye bye that. They ain't going to talk to me. Y'all sit down. Sit down. I don't want to shave today. I want to shave tomorrow. By that. Yeah, by that. Yeah, by that. By that. You have every right to tell mental distress by. You got, y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. You got every right to tell bipolar, bye. I, I don't need that. Come on here, somebody. Uh, I don't need to be classified as HWDD. Come on here, somebody. Bye, that. I don't need no medicine like no tribunal or seroquil to calm me down. Uh, uh, it's just something on the inside of me that can't stand foolishness. Uh, look at somebody and say, don't mistake my meanness uh, for bipolarness. 
Cause a pound this week here yeah, yeah. have taught me Come on now. and shown me Come on now. how much me and my wife is actually one Come on now. when I'm outside of her presence. I need to say that again. This week here yeah, yeah, yeah. have taught me and yeah, shown yeah. me how me and my wife is one on outside of her presence. Because the old AB will tell you a piece of his mind and hurt your feelings. The old apostle Bowden won't let you talk stupid to him and get away with But the new apostle Bowden, the one that's resurrected in the image of Christ, say you can say what you want to, but when I go down, salvation 
how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desires. Anybody had that given to them lately? If you wait, just tell somebody, wait on me. Tell them, God cannot lie. But you got to get your heart in the right place. When your heart is not in the right place, God can't give you your heart's desires. That go for the kings and the queens of God. That go for all of the children of the Most High. When the heart desires the good things, then there is no good thing the Lord will withhold from them who love him. So when you desire something, this is going to hurt right here. Because many of us desire to see God wipe away all of our enemies. But God simply says, I can't wipe away all your enemies because I need an enemy to be there to be assigned to you so you can get on your job and do your assignment. Because the truth be told, some of us would not move if we didn't have nobody putting no fire to us. Some of us would not move if we didn't have folks player hating on us or jocking and clocking our every move. Some of us would not do anything with life if we didn't just have nobody there to just doubt us. And I think that's good in some sense. I think that's good in some sense. But I don't need nobody to worry about me because I'm not focused on what people think anyhow. I hear what they say, but I still ask the same question Jesus asked. Who do men say that I am? Come on here, somebody. Some of y'all got to realize that there's a question in your mind. And your question be, I wonder what folks say about me. Oh, you ain't can't think they're going to look at me like that today. I'm a preacher. Uh, you wonder what is folks saying about me. I wonder what, how do they view me? I wonder how they see me. I wonder do they see me in a different type of light. I wonder, are people talking about me? Well, let me help you understand something. You don't need to really focus on what people are saying. All you need to do is find you a couple of followers and just ask them, who do you say that I am? Because I done heard everything that people had to say about me, but I want to know who do you say that I am? Because it's the followers that's also the doubters. It's your followers that's also the ones that are conniving. It's your followers the ones who were smiling your face, but they your backstabbers. It's your followers. What are you saying to me? I'm simply saying, when you get tired of folks following you, you stop and ask them, who do people say that I am? Oh, girl, you know, they say this about you, girl. You know, folks love you. Folks just love you. The devil is a liar. Oh, I'm going to be sensitive as I can be, but I'm going to be blunt. Uh, isn't it so ironic that folks got so much stuff good to say about people when they did? But you can't say nothing good when they alive. Uh, how is that possible? Uh, how is it that the person that's that lying in the grave, uh, you know to God you hated their goods, uh, but you get up there and just test the lie. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I'd rather folks say the wrong type of stuff while I'm dead uh, than to be saying the right type of stuff while I'm dead. Uh, don't you go say I was a good man when I'm dead. Uh, that's the wrong type of stuff. Cause I remember when I 
was walking. Now God don't reverse the curse. Now you walking, and I don't want to see you walking, but get in here. Uh, can anybody bless any enemy? Can you bless the ones that hate you? Can you bless the ones who don't like you? Can you bless them? Uh, look at somebody and say, I can be in the presence of somebody who can't stay in my guts, but I ain't worried. Got no fear because I know God watches over me. Look at somebody and say, neighbor. Tell them, say, I ain't worried about nobody. Because I got the whole armor of God on. Tell them I got this whole armor on. And I'm walking behind me. What's behind me? Walking behind me is goodness and mercy. They follow me all the days of my life. Oh, some of us should have been dead. But God, I wish I could preach it. Some of us should have been crazy. But God, oh, I should have been getting that phone call and going to visit you on LSU at the 10th floor. But God, some of y'all should have been at brick room looking behind the glass. But God, some of you had some crazy Negroes that should have killed you. But God, You're going, but just trust me because I'm taking you. 
God said, I'm tired of my people packing like they poor. He said, you got to pack like you rich. You might ain't got all the money yet, but God said, I want you to walk like it, talk like it, dress like it, move like it, act like it, operate like it. Because in the kingdom of heaven, there's houses and land, the gold and the silver, it belongs to God, and God is ready to give it up. Don't, don't, don't pack for uh what that what that place is down there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't pack like you want to go to Lake Shore Inn. Or you going to the Hampton. Super eight. Ho hotel, y'all been up here. Hotel six. Or if you come down Monk House in Greenwood Road, the plantation and they renamed it. Come on here, somebody. Come on, what's it called? What's it called? Cozy. Cozy in. Ain't nothing cozy about them bed bugs over there. Come on, listen. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. Ain't nothing cozy about that spot. Because that spot for cheap liquor and cheap women and men. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. But God say, I'm getting ready to take you through some presidential things. Why? Because you are a royal priesthood. You are a chosen generation. And God say, don't worry about what folks gonna say. He say, you can put an outfit together that costs ten dollars. But it looks like you got on ten thousand dollars. Come on here, somebody. God say, it's all about your mindset. The way you dress is the way you see yourself. Look at somebody say, upgrade. Tell them upgrade. Tell them upgrade. Upgrade in your wardrobe. Because God get ready to take you to another level. Tell them upgrade. You're looking for an executive job. You got to dress like the CEO. Come on here, somebody. Oh, God. You got to understand. I'm going to give you some history here. Uh -huh, I'm going to give you some history. David was 15 years old when he first got anointed to be king. Uh -huh. And he was 15 and Saul is already in his, uh, he already in his settled stages. He's already fully grown. Yet and still, Samuel obeys the word of the Lord in the voice of God. And he goes to Jesse's house to anoint Jesse's sons. And yet, Saul, uh, Samuel is looking at all of their stature. So what God tells to Samson is, don't look at their outer appearance. For God looks at the heart while man looks at the eye. Uh, you got folks that still looking at your outside, but God say, tell them again, I'm looking at their inside. And I'm not moving on their life because of what they look like on the outside. I'm moving on their life like I am because of what's on the inside. Oh, I'm going to hurt some folks, but it's going to heal you. I might, you might, and we all. Yes, I understand Romans 3 and 23 say we all come short of God's glory because of sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory. But did you ever look at that scripture again? It said, for we all have. That's past tense. Then it said, sin. That's E-N-D. I need to spit it out and show it to you. For all have sinned. That means you have past tense. Sinned past tense. Look at somebody and say, but what about now? Tell them the stuff folks call sin, I ain't involved in. The stuff folks doing that sin, I ain't involved in. So God is looking at my heart. Oh, God is looking at my heart while you're looking at the outer appearance. You might see me at the thrift, but that don't mean I'm buying no liquor. Uh, you might see me over there. Why are you over there? I have to turn somebody's water on. Do you understand me now? Watch this. Folks see where you are and they judge where you are, but they don't know where you're going. Uh, I feel like preaching, Deacon. When David got anointed, Samuel was looking at him for where he is, but Samuel really couldn't see where God was going to take David. But Saul had an eye to see. When it came down to fight the battle with the Philistines, there was a giant by the name of Goliath. Goliath was this big old seven foot, eight foot 
tall man. He was so big until Saul said, look, whoever slay this giant, I'll give them my daughter. David being 15 years old, come down there running without no shoes on. Probably didn't have on no shirt. All he had was just a bag and a slingshot with no rocks. And he said, I'll fight him and don't nobody want to fight him. Saul tried to give David his armor. And David said, I have not proven this yet. In other words, I can't fit what you got. Look at somebody and say, I'm not trying to be a duplicate of you. I'm not trying to wear what you wear. I'm not trying to fit what you fit. Because what flows your boat might not flow my boat. And what works for you, so ain't going to work for me. Can I preach it here? So David says, give me my own things. And they say, what do you need? Uh, David said, I'm going to the brook. And I'm going to get me five pebbles. He went down to the brook. You got to understand. He took five rocks out of the brook. At this time, because they pay him, the brook is flowing with water. Water represents the spirit. The rock represents Christ. David represents man. So now David is saying, I'm not only am I taking the spirit of God with me, I'm taking the rock by which I stand on. And when he came to the battle, he looked at the Goliath and the giant man, and he began to just swing it up. He began to swing it around. Even though Goliath marked them, and as he marked them, he said, you brought a king to, to fight me? Am I a dog or something? He said, matter of fact, I'm going to make an example of you, Hebrews. I'm going to make an example out of you. And then when David got there, as Goliath was running with his sword, the Bible said that David took the slingshot. He cocked it back. And when he released it, the rock hit him in the center of his head, knocking Goliath to the ground. Uh, I just want to tell you this, that you got some Goliaths in your life that you don't have to pull back on and just get ready to release God. You don't have to release the rock. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. You don't have to release that rock because that rock is going to penetrate. And when your giant fall, then you take the sword, the very word the giant used against you, and you use it against him or you use it against her. Somebody and say neighbor, but everything somebody said about me, it's gonna return back to them. Tell them say for every negative word that somebody spoke over my life, it's gonna return back to them. For every hate word they spoke, it's gonna return back to them. For everything that they say, it's gonna return back to them. Gotta return back. Get out yeah. to it. Yeah. 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 Watch this. Watch this. Come on, come verse 3, on. verse 3 says, on, he, on. he not only given them his heart's desire and has not withholding the request of his lips. And David said, I got the pause. Salah so mean pause. Please wait. Hold up. Pump the brakes. Think. Meditate. Whatever you need to do, just don't go too far. And then he thought about some else. For thou preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. Let me help you understand something. Many people aiming at your head because of the crown you wear. I ain't talking to nobody. I'm going to talk to them folks that's back there behind y'all. Look at them looking. I know. That's expectations right there. That's expectations. Many folks aiming at your head because of the crown that you wear. You don't even see that you got a crown that's pure gold. And they, they that's, that's why they keep messing with you and trying to drive you crazy. They trying to get you to take off your crown. But a real queen don't need to fight over her palace when her king gone. She knows she in charge. Come on here, somebody. A real woman ain't gonna let no ordinary woman come in and take her place. We don't need no tools in the house talking about woman to woman. No, baby, we don't set it straight at the door. This is my domain, and that's my man. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what God has for me, it is for 
for me. So don't mess with mine. Because when you mess with mine, you mess with me. I wish I had some help here. I just wish I had some help here. Uh, you better understand it here. I don't care how it look like we don't get along sometimes. You better not mess with mine. I don't care how it look like we argue sometimes. You better not mess with mine. Oh, can I preach up in here? Oh, mama, you better not even mess with mine. Oh, keep your mouth off mine, baby. Because mine is mine. I ain't telling you about yours. So don't you tell me nothing about mine. And then if you ain't got no man and you holding on to Jesus, you ought to not let nobody talk about your Jesus. Because when they talk about the church, they talking about Jesus. You ought to tell them, shut up talking about my man. That's my man's body. And my man's body look good. Don't talk about the church. Because the church is the bride of Christ. And when you talk about us, you're talking about him. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him, even length of days, forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation. David is big on this salvation of thee. Because David is saying, I don't care how far you go in life, don't you ever forget that the Lord's salvation is the reason why you are delivered. Oh God, I need to say that again. Don't get so far out there you forget that it was God's salvation that brought you deliverance. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Folks want you dead but your life is everlasting. That's why every time the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord lift up a standard against the devil. That's why every time somebody thinks that you are broke, busted, and disgusted, God turn around and bless you again in their face. That's why when everybody thinks that you are counted out, God will put you in covering and hiding and then reveal you in the right season so you can come back and say you thought I was through, but then I tell you like the Terminator, I'll be broke. Uh, look at somebody and say neighbor uh, Tell them if that didn't do it uh, Then nothing else can Nothing else can The glory in his in it, Thou salvation, thou salvation yeah. Yeah. Honor and majesty uh -huh. Has thou laid upon him For thou hast made him Most blessed Forever uh -huh. Some of y'all ought to stop saying you more blessed and just say I'm most blessed. Because you can't go no higher than most. Because uh, God is the most high. That means ain't nobody higher than him. So now you can tell every hater that I am most blessed. Every time I should not have and God give it, I say I'm most blessed. I, uh, I know that sounds like bad grammar, but uh, we can talk Ebonics, can't we? Uh, uh -huh. well, how you doing today? Quick tell them for blessed and highly favored and just tell them I'm blessed and most blessed because God have laid that upon me. How do you know you most blessed? Because everywhere I walk, I see another blessing. I feel like Lee William. Ooh, wee, another blessing. Every time I step out, I see another blessing. Every time I go somewhere, I see another blessing. When you get that paycheck, you ought to see another blessing. When you get that next car, you ought to see another blessing. When you walk into your house and close your door and it ain't no housing, you ought to see another blessing. I feel like preaching in here. When you can drive up in something and then go park it and decide which one you want to drive today, you ought to see another blessing. When you can see your children coming off drugs and coming out of the streets, you ought to see another blessing. 
Uh, listen what he said. He says, yeah, yeah. this one here. Say, but thou hast made him most blessed forever. Yeah. That means ain't no running out of this. Yeah. Your blessings never empty. Yeah. Your cup is never empty. Yeah. For why? Because he said, when you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give it to your bosom. In other words, God say, I'm pressing it down because I need to put more in there. But you might be saying right now, God, I can't handle another. And God say, yes, you can because I'm stretching you now. Oh, that's why your mind is all over the place because I'm stretching you. That's why you see where you should be. Oh, God got a word for you. You work in retail. But God say, do you see an empty building? He say, I allowed you to be there to learn how it feels to be second but be in the first position because you're there more than the owners. God say, ooh, we I see another blessing. So when you see the store, God say, you just put your eyes on it. Then you get with some folks who got the same faith as you. And you go and anoint that building. Lay your hands on that building and call it those things which be not as though they are. Then you go home and then you write the vision down. Then you make it plain. And then when folks read it, they begin to run with it. Who am I preaching to today? I don't want to just work for a company and make them richer and I'm trying to get rich. No, I'm just going to work for you and I'm going to let you get rich. But baby, I'm learning from you how to get richer. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. So I see another blessing. Oh God, I feel like preaching. Oh Deacon, everybody know. Oh, he's a bad man in the trees. But today, they found out he not only is a tree man, he's not only the city man, he's not only a water fixer, meaning he can fix the plumbing, but he also fixes electricity. So, oh, we, I went and saw another blessing. And on top of getting ready to fix the electricity, the woman said, I see some doors and cabinets that need to be fixed. When I text the man that owns the house, the man said, can I go ahead and make you my contractor? I said, well, let's get it started. You don't hear what I'm saying. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, when you do right by God, God will do right by you. Uh, I feel like preaching here. I feel like preaching. And you know what? I always got me somebody with me. Uh, I got the deacon with me. And I got my brother-in-law with me. Look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you better get you a Paul and a Silas. Somebody don't mind praying at midnight with you. You better find you a real friend. Somebody that ain't going to clip you behind your back. You better find a real homie. Somebody that got your back. You see, you got to understand this. When you're in retail yeah. and working in the stores, you go into a building and you say, you know what? Yeah, they might have that, but I'm going to go through the city and I'm going to call them and see what it's looking like. Find out who owns it. Then I go and sit myself down and do my research. I do some online bargain shopping, looking into some retails seeing what it would cost. Then I go sit down with some folks who are like-minded, who want to see another black business that flourish through street boy. Then I go down to the chambers of commerce and I'll give them my business proposal. Then I go reach out to the NAACP and then I'll show them what my proposal is stating and what I'm looking for. Because I'm looking for some people that know some people that know some people that will connect me with the right people. And before you know it, oh, I don't mean to sound prejudiced right here or seem like I'm biased, so please don't take it as this. But I don't want my shop hanging in the ghetto, baby. I 
money where money is flowing. Because I don't want to be closed in my three months of opening. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Uh, if you are a beautician, you don't want to go get a booth. Baby, you better booth and clean out that bedroom that you ain't using. And you, y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. Save your money. Don't go clicking up with nobody. They using your products and stealing your hot curls and then stealing your clientele. The devil is a liar. Baby, you are most blessed. And most blessed folks can't just hang out with ordinary blessed folks. Because ordinary blessed folks is blessed to just see another day. But the most blessed folks are the ones that God have opened up the windows of heaven and poured them out of blessing that there wasn't no room to receive it. The king trusted in the Lord. The king, the king trusted in the Lord. For the king trusted in the Lord. And through the mercy of the Most High, he shall not be moved. You don't have time to keep uprooting yourself because of other folks' opinions. You don't have time to keep shifting your projection of your focus and restarting on another project when you have gotten your instructions from God because other people love to start messing with you but they so ain't gonna hang out with you when you're going through the mess so again, they love to start messing with you if I was you, I wouldn't start with that. Mm. If I was you, that right now we don't need to do that. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry. This ain't no we thing. This is a me thing. Mm. And then God talking to me, he ain't say we. He told me about me. And I got to do what God told me to do. Mm. Now, if you want God to do something for you and make it a we thing, then you might need to go and talk to God. But if you're not a good steward, then don't come over here messing with me. Y'all right. right. well, ain't gonna talk to me, is it? Because you know why? You got homegirls who are not good stewards. Right. What do you mean, I'm not a good steward? In other words, the minute they get $30, they want to go to Simple 10. Get them a $10 outfit, and then they want to go to the high. And find somebody to buy them some type of drink. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. And then hope to God that they live last little twenty dollars they got left. Hopefully they let them take them to the Waffle House. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Or uh huh. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. Uh huh. And then go home drunk. And then lay down for free and get up with nothing. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. Uh, but when you really got your mind set on some things, uh, you'll begin to tell folks who ain't got no vision. Look, I can't hang around you. Because without a vision, the people perish. So my vision is to be what God say be. And right about now, this is called tight season. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. The reason why it's tight because I got to save everything. I got to save it right about now. Because God want me to start investing in me. So in investing in me, he starts to invest in me. And then he give you a double portion. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Oh, well, he's investing in you and you're investing in you. God say just keep on praising. I know your haters are around you, but keep on praising. Pray to help me out, you and your voice. I know folks is looking at you crazy, but keep on praising. I know folks might talk about you, but keep on praising me. I know they look at your tears, but they that so in tears shall weep in joy. I know they see you walking backwards and forwards, pacing the house, trying to figure out which way to go. But God say just keep on pacing. And keep scratching your head Cause I'm getting ready to download The idea in your mind I'm getting ready to download The next move for your life I'm getting ready to download The next blessing for your life I'm getting ready to download The next miracle in your life Are oh, you the black sheep of the family But God blood gonna make you a white sheep Oh, you the outcast But God gonna make you stand out Oh, you're the one they scrutinize. You're the one they criticize. You're the one they put the name on the highway. But God say the devil is alive. I'm getting ready to bring you up. I'm getting ready to bring you out. Is there anybody here that looking for God to bring you out? Bring you out of struggling. Bring you out. Bring you out of poverty. Bring you out. Bring you out of frustration so you can think better. Bring you out. You don't need a man to get blessed. All you need is God. But what a man can't do, God can. What nobody can do, God can. You can do 
I'm your neighbor and say, neighbor, if that didn't do it, then I don't know what else to stop me. This is my season. This is my time. This is my moment. And I ain't gonna miss it for nothing in the world. I got one last shot and I got to go all the way. I got one more praise and I got to go all the way. Tell your neighbor, say neighbor, I don't mean to be selfish, but right about now, I need God to work a miracle in my life. I need a Sunday that means a turnaround. I need God to turn some things around, turn some stuff around, stuff that's going wrong, make it work for my good, stuff that's going
which are called by my name. I'm giving them kingdom blessings. I'm giving them kingdom houses. Houses that kings and queens lives in. Now, why do we want you in something like that? Because when you step out and say, I'm blessed like that because of God. God say you will begin to show folks uh, that he's not a God that's dead. Uh, but he's still alive. Uh, and he's still in the blessing business. Uh, look at somebody for the last time and say, neighbor. Uh, tell them, say, I thank God for that. Because that made me this. I'm a person. They got a mouth. And I'm going to open my mouth. And I'm going to release the words of my testimony. Look at them and say, you ain't seen nothing yet. I don't care if they're your relative. Tell them, say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Tell them, get on board. Because my blessing might upset you. It'll offend you if you're not on board. Tell them, I know you might be close to me, but I just need you to take it to the old school and bag back and give me 50 feet. Tell them, I need a little COVID virus feet right by now, because I'm looking for God to bring me an antivirus. I need God to bring the antidote for my next blessing. I need something from heaven, and I don't want it from nobody else. next level. Come on here somebody. Because if it ain't for our enemies, we would not get blessed. If it wasn't for Jesus, Jesus would have never hung on the cross. Thank God for folks who sell you out. You ought to thank God for that. Thank God for the ones that will sell you out. Because some folks, we done got sold out at the right time. Even though it felt like it was the wrong time. But it was the right time. Because it could have been a better time than the time now. Mm. All right. Why be in the presence of snakes? Mm. Yeah. That's on their guard. My God. And yet you think they pets. Mm. A python might not bite, but he will squeeze the life out you. Mm. Can you say it again? The python might not bite, but he will switch the life out you. And he ain't doing it all at one time. Every time you move, he move. And when you try to go that way, he tighten up. When you try to make a step, he tighten up. And he begin to wrap himself around 
You know why the snake do that? You know why the python does that? Because he want to take on you. He want to take on you. He don't want to take over you. He just want to take on you. And if he can take on you and squeeze the life out of you, now the life you had, he got. Oh, you right. It's right there in the pipe door. And guess what the pipe door does after that? He looses you and leave you alone. Because he already got you. He came for what he came for. He come to steal, kill, and to destroy. You ought to say bye-bye to your exes. Right. Quit letting the Mexicans come back like they still prevalent. Y'all right. ain't talking to me. Quit letting them cut. Let that go. Because that's what's holding you back. Every time the ex come back, bring another that on that problem. Another that. That situation. And every time they leave, they come back with something more worse than what they left with. I love you. I love you. I love you. you know I'm good, fool. Let me hold a little something. I got you. You know I got you. Have I ever let you down? Come on, don't do me like that. Then they call you by their favorite name. Ooh. Ooh. See, you don't know, you know all the things to say. Stop lying to yourself. You know all the things to say, too. I'm tired of that. What? Every time you come around, there's always the same stuff. That stuff. Yeah. That right yeah. there. That, that hurts. Yeah. And don't think because when you get married, you're supposed to hide and stay in your house. Yeah. Married folks run into exes too. But don't hide. If it's nothing in there, just enjoy. A lady was, I was playing my song, I Won't Let You Fall If You Lean On Me. That's my gospel song. And I'm just jamming, jamming in the red light. Jamming, jamming. And she blew a horn right at the light while I was picking my brother up from his brother's house. And she was in the turning lane, and I'm right there on the barcoons, getting ready to go a little bit further, and then turn. She gets on that side in her turning lane, and she makes it known that she's looking. And she blew the horn and held it. <laughs> and I'm studying on that. And she, ah! <laughs> So I thought maybe I was disturbing her, I turned it down and she said, I just love it when I see a man praising God. You married? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> Happily, I said, without well, a shadow of a doubt, and drove off. All we ain't right. got nothing else to say after that. Right. I'm cold. I was on phone with my wife one time, and the lady, I was to turn on some water. This is a talk. Mm -hmm. You have to be waiting on the city to come at least three days now. Because we don't just turn the call that day and turn you on that same day. You have to wait. And when I went and cut her water on, she was trying her best to holler. Mm -hmm. That's a turn off. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to say, ma'am, I can imagine. How many bells you'd have missed? Oh, <laughs> Waiting on the water part. <laughs> I can imagine the smell you got. So I ain't no way I would want to talk to you. Even if I wouldn't, man. That's what I wanted to say.
say. But she kept talking. And then I let the Holy Ghost reveal. She said, you look like you have the mirror. I said, I am. I can tell. I said, thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> said all that to say this. Just this week, I was accused of wanting somebody. And the whole time, the Lord had already revealed it to everybody. In the ministry and to me and my wife, that that individual came to try to get me. But because what the scripture said, the king trusted in the Lord and he shall not be moved. I didn't move. And when the person put that foolishness out there, I didn't reply. They put out some more stuff. They say, I'm a demon. I didn't reply. They said, I'm running a coat. I didn't reply. They say, they saw the devil in me. I didn't reply. Then they, they, they yeah, they wanted the devil. Then they went so far, they say, you something else. I didn't reply. Then that person just decided to say, I'm done talking to you. I didn't reply. You talking to yourself. After we took care of the business that we needed to take care of, my wife and I took care of the business we needed to take care of, I put the person on block. I don't need to talk to you. The business is done. We took care of our business. But what I didn't understand was if I was so much of a demon and a devil and running a cult, why did you sit under the leadership like you did so long? Right. Hmm. And if I was so much of a imp or a devil, hmm. why would you let me baptize your child right. Right. in the name of Jesus Christ? No, what you were looking for was some Marvin Gaye. All right. But you ain't getting no sexual healing on this one. You got the right plan, but the wrong man. Uh -huh. Oh, here's somebody. This ain't just church talk. Uh -huh. Man, I walk this thing. Uh -huh. I thank God for this. Yeah. When God gives you the apple of your eye, yeah. you don't need the right one in the bottom. And I ain't trying to slice the apple to get a piece of pie meat. I got a whole pie. Take my time. I got a gift from God. And not many people can say God gave them a gift. Some men got knives and not wives. I thank God for my gift. And I'm going to take my time unwrapping. <laughs> but it behooves us. That person said, you ran away all the men out of the church. So you can try to get to me. I didn't reply. I talked with my wife. And I told my wife. I said, that person was right about that, about running off the men. And the reason why I ran off the men because it was the word of the man of God that got approval from God to say to the men that if you think you're going to be an elder or a preacher or a teacher and walk under this leadership, you better not get found smoking dope you better not get caught drinking. Because why? We preaching and teaching to folks about not doing it. And if you up there doing it and they see it, what can you say to them? They're going to look at me like I'm doing it with you. So if running off these old fake hypocrites, fly by night, journey come lately, still want to see it and dip and tip and slip, type of brothers, then bye-bye homies. I don't need you under my leadership. 
Don't you know a man get drunk and will beat a woman? Don't you know a man can get drunk and if he ain't the real daddy of that daughter, he'll rape your daughter? I don't care if he is a preacher. That stuff happening in the church. And they want you to shh, shh, and talk about one like that. The devil is a lie. That stuff will mess folks up. So if not having that junk under me is what it's going to take to keep God's house the way it's supposed to be, I don't need it. I don't, I don't want no minister, okay, if she's a woman or a man, telling me listening to secular music. It's the way of God. You don't need that. How you gonna tell some young boy, don't listen to NBA young boy and obey the words of killing somebody and you up in that bumping? That don't fly right. God said he come back for a church without spot and without wrinkle. I know a lot of old school songs because my mind ain't forgot about the songs, but I don't have to go and listen to them because when he saved you, he don't cause you to forget nothing. I just don't need it for live entertainment. There's a joy bell that keep ringing in my soul. So I was say it was a lot said. And then the person put their mother up to call my phone. And as the person called, mother called my phone, asked for five minutes of my time. And I don't even think they even gave me five minutes. I said out of my heart, I have no ill towards no person and nobody. I said what I said and I meant what I said. If any person leave this ministry, I pray you keep walking with God. That makes me happy. That's all that matters. You can go any place you want because you're not my people. You belong to God. And wherever you go, just keep walking with the Lord versus staying and not needing to be here and don't want to be here and then you are damaging yourself. Because what you're going to do is leave in a wrong manner. And I'm learning now. When you take a look at people's track record. That's why it's good for preachers. That they will come together and start talking. Talking. If you know you. You know especially smaller churches. You know when you have conflict. And a person that's conflicting. And if they go there, you ain't got to bad mouth them, but just caution them to be mindful of what they have. Because if you come over here wrong and leave here wrong, you're going to go over there wrong. And then you're going to find the same fault that you think is in everybody's church. And before you know it, you're going to go church to church to church to church looking for that wrong stuff. And really the stuff that's wrong is within you. This has been a trying week. And yet, God has prevailed again. Look at your life. You have some of them same type of folks that right there in your life. And you want them gone. Some of them you need gone, but you just won't be the courage to tell them to get gone. But I promise you, if you pray and say, God, remove what is not for me. Don't get mad when he remove them. Don't go running after what God is throwing away. Because if we spend so much time looking back and trying to walk forward, we're going to run into everything that's in the front of us. Let's keep our eyes on what God has said that he wants to do for us as an individual. 
Because the truth be told, this is the season where God wants to come to meet you where you are. Meet you where you are. Meet you where you are. And it's going to take for you to get in that place that he is found. You got to go in that secret place. You're not going to find him in a setting where everybody is at. It's going to take when you get still and you just be real and just put it out there. God, I know I need you and I need you to help me. And don't let me fall weak and don't let me fall short again. And just in case I stumble, hurry up and pick me back up. But I need you to build a fence around me. Because some of y'all got two kinds of hearts. When you get it, here come everybody that want it. Because you got it. And you keep giving and you send yourself back further and further and further and further. Quit with these IOUs and I ain't forgot about you. I ain't forgot what I owe you. No, go ahead and write that debt off and just learn from it. Because when you're trying to go, you're spending too much time. We're already in the what month? This is the fourth month. Oh, when summer comes, it's going to be the sixth month real quick. School start back, it's going to be like the seventh month going into the eighth month. And many of us are going to be back right there again. Make your mind up tonight that whatever you set out to do, do it. Do it. Do it. If you set out to just start blinding out some people just so you can keep your sanity, blot them out. Blot them out. If you writing off some folks, write them on off. They're not going to die. You they life support system, but they're not going to die. They're going to go find somebody else to leech off of. And you got to understand, every time God started doing a good thing in you, he always come that distraction. Know who your distractor is. Know who your distractor is. Coming to distract you. And pull you further back. Shall we pray? Shall we pray? Brandon, let me stop softly. Spirit of the living God. We come to you tonight and we ask that you will hear the petition that every person that's here, that they will make their request known unto you. And God, for everything that we all stand in the need of as an individual, we pray right now, God, that you will meet us where we are. If that secret place is right there within our home, in our bedroom, in our living room, if it's in the middle of the night while everyone else is sleeping, we're outside standing up or just sitting outside. Father, wherever it is, meet us right there. We want you to find us in that place. That place where it's called a still small voice. Father, I pray right now, God, that you will bless every individual with the true desires of their heart. And God, give them the things that you have in store for them that's according to your plan and your purpose. Father, don't just bless the single women with just a man. Bless them with a real husband. Bless them with a husband that will aid and that will cater and that will nourish them. Bless them with a wife that will become the helpmate and that will be the real that will protect them. Father, if it's a vehicle that they stand in the need of, a house that they stand in the need of, a job that they stand in the need of, a raise, whatever it is. Father, meet the need right now. Meet every need according to your riches and glory. Supply the needs. You said it in your word. You shall supply every need. Thank you right now. Thank you for birthing visions again. Thank you for giving my brother, my sister, 
Thank you for giving them back their plan again, their purpose again. And God, remove any anti-purpose people. Anybody that's in their life that are anti-purpose, God, that don't have a purpose in life, that, that just don't want to be nothing, God, remove any stumbling block or hindrance from them right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, right now, I bind the hand of the enemy. I bind the hand of the enemy that when they go into certain places, I bind the enemy, God, that the cops won't be able to come around. God, that they won't get caught up in something that they had nothing to do with. I bind the plan of the enemy that they won't be in places. Places that, God, they are just being social and someone will open out fire and they will be a target. I bind the hand of the enemy right now. I dismantle every assignment of Satan right now. And I come against everything that the enemy is trying to throw at their mind right now. And I release the helmet of salvation upon your people. Right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I say that you will dress them with your whole armor, Father. Send the holy angels and send your holy, your holy ghost to encamp around about them right now. And anoint them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. Bless their houses. Bless where they are, God. Strengthen them right there in that situation, God. And we'll be careful to give you the praise. In the name of Jesus. Thank you now. Keep your hands on their minds. That they won't break. Keep your hands on their mind. They won't have a nervous breakdown. Keep your hands on their mind. That they won't go back to their old ways. Keep your hands on their mind. That God, they won't repeat the same cycles over and over. Keep your hands on them, God. Keep your hands on their heart, God. That they won't open their heart up to get hurt over and over again. Keep your hands on their heart, oh God. That they won't let bitterness set in, God. Keep your hands on their heart right now. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 God bless you.